All right, guys, today we're gonna take a little bit of time and learn how to do toothpick bridges. Uh, you should have glue, uh, some toothpicks, a ruler, a pencil, and a piece of wax paper that I'll show you in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Our first step is going to be marking down where the toothpicks are going to land, okay? Now, I want you to notice that a standard flat toothpick is six squares long. Now, when we glue this together, we need to know where the overlap is going to be. And so what I want you to do is go through and mark every two squares on your paper. This is gonna help us uh, keep everything evenly spaced. Okay, the next step that I'm going to do is I am going to decide which type of bridge I am going to build. There are three basic styles of bridges. You have your Pratt, which has your diagonals going towards the center. Notice that it is comprised of triangles. You have the Warren, which are equilateral triangles. You could have a Warren that has vertical supports, but notice that the triangles uh, change direction, not just going directly to the center like the Pratt. Uh, the third is a lattice, okay? A lattice is basically diagonals going everywhere. I personally am going to build this quadrangle Warren that creates these diamonds in the center. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my ruler and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one side and I'm going to do a diagonal going to the right and then I'm going to come back after I have done all of those And now I'm going to do diagonals going in the other direction. Now that I have one truss design all the way done, I need to make sure that, the, that my second truss is the exact same image. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna go ahead and get started drawing my quadrangle Warren on my second truss. Okay, my next step, now that I have drawn a quadrangle worn, it doesn't matter which uh, truss design you have, uh, but once you are done drawing, you need your piece of wax paper and some tape. It doesn't matter what color tape you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my wax paper. You can kind of see it's shiny there. And I'm going to lay my paper down upside down. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape this upside down to my wax paper, making sure that there are no wrinkles. All right, guys, it's time to glue. So believe it or not, there's a very specific way that you want these to be bonded. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some toothpicks and uh, let me see if I can zoom you in on the beginning of where we are going to be gluing. Now, when I am gluing toothpicks, the crucial part of gluing them is making sure that the glue is binding the two pieces of wood together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start and I'm going to glue every other two boxes. Notice I started with glue on, glue off, glue on, glue off, glue on, glue off, glue on. And I'm gonna go all the way down. Now, once I have glue, I'm gonna follow this over under pattern. I'm gonna go over and notice if you find a toothpick that's a little bit shorter, I'm gonna leave it out. And I'm gonna follow this over under. Notice it's a little bit uh, crooked, some of these. So that's called a cull. Uh, when you're picking peaches in the summertime, uh, you will cull fruit that isn't up to standard, like if a bird had eaten it or if it's got bugs you cull the fruit that you don't want to eat and so notice that i followed this over under pattern notice i went over and down i go up 
Notice that I can get that glue to come out and I follow this over under pattern, over under pattern, okay? And once you have done that for your top, you're going to repeat that for your bottom. We go every two on, two off, two on, two off, two on, two off. Notice I'm putting the glue directly on the line, okay? And I go with my over, and I notice that I'm using my flat toothpicks. Flat toothpicks are a lot easier to use, and I squeeze that glue between the toothpicks. Over, under, over, under. Now, you are going to take your time. In mathematics, we teach attention to precision. That means we're paying attention to the detail. Notice we're trying to keep our lines nice and straight. Now, once you have all of your horizontal lines done for your first truss, you've got to go all the way across on one truss, and then you need to repeat your process for your second truss. Now that I have all of my horizontals on both of my trusses built, I'm gonna go ahead and work on my diagonals. So I'm just gonna choose a diagonal going to the right first, okay? Now it's, it's really important that you only use a little bit of glue on this so that you're not putting a whole bunch of glue on the wax paper. Now notice where these triangles are touching the horizontal, I'm just putting a little dot of glue. And as I go down, I'm trying to be efficient in laying down the glue, and I'm not just doing one toothpick at a time. Okay, so here we have my diagonals going to the right. And I take this and I ever so carefully place it down. I personally like a little bit of overlap on the top, not the bottom. Um, I'm also gonna go ahead and put a vertical here on my edge, just so that it has a place to land when I do my diagonal to the right. Notice I'm overlapping on the second plane and I didn't let that tip go up on top of the diagonal. Okay, this is a little bit of strategy in how you put down your toothpicks so that when you build your next layer, it's gonna lay nice and flat, okay? And I'm just gonna go through and lay these diagonals. Now, let's go ahead and assume <clears throat> that I did my diagonals going all the way across. Uh, you could let this dry for a while, um, it, it would probably dry in an hour's time. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the diagonals going the other way now. But you have to have had all of your diagonals going all the way across, because notice my horizontal is in layer one, my diagonal going to the right is in layer two, and I'm going to create a diagonal going to the left on my third layer. Now I want you to notice where I put glue in this third layer. Notice that I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on the cross member, okay? It's, it's a little bit trickier to do, okay? But creating those bonds in each level is what makes your bridge really strong. If you can put those bonds on each level, then you are going to create a bridge that is really strong. Now, <clears throat> one of the things about not letting my bridge dry all the way is these toothpicks move a little bit. And so if you're in a hurry, it can be done. Uh, but if you are patient and you let this dry, you will actually be a little bit more successful. I want to build this video, so I'm going to go ahead and go through with it, okay? And notice that my third layer is going to be the diagonal. The strength in this bridge is in the triangles. 
the strength is not in the horizontal shape. The strength is not in the diagonal shape. The strength is in the triangles that are created, okay? This triangle right here is where the strength comes in this bridge. So you are going to go through and you are going to repeat this pattern. You're going to do horizontals, diagonals, and diagonals the other way. If you did, let's say, a warren with vertical supports, you would put a vertical in there somewhere. But it's the repetition of these patterns that you go ahead and build. Okay, I want you to notice that on my bridge, I went ahead and put in a third horizontal going through the center just to build a little bit more strength. You may have noticed in the center, I used to have a diamond. A diamond is not that strong because a diamond is a parallelogram that can change. However, by putting in a center line, I have created more triangles. And the strength of a bridge is in its triangles. Notice layer one, my horizontal, layer two, my diagonal right, and layer three, my diagonal left. Now I've completed technically one system of truss or uh, of lines. However, my truss is not done. I am going to go ahead and repeat this process several times. Your truss should have uh, at least seven layers of toothpicks. So far, I have three, horizontal, diagonal right, and diagonal left. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat this process a couple of times so that my truss is at least seven layers thick. So, happy bridge building. We'll make a separate video for taking our trusses and making it three-dimensional. Till then.